Atlanta. Begin the day tied for first. Atlanta playing in Canada this afternoon. Dodgers playing right now, facing the Cardinals in Los Angeles. Bob Ojeda against Ken Hill. Ojeda in trouble here, facing Tom Pagnazzi with two men on. He drives it towards center field. Brett Butler goes after it. It gets underneath and away. Pedro Guerrero is in, and Felix Jose is home. And in the second inning, the Cardinals take a 2 to nothing lead as Mike Morgan trying to finish with a winning record for a change, facing Ken Hill just off the Desic Rays at Expos. Bottom of the fifth, no score. Andres Galarraga off Tom Glavin. Gives his team the big one. Deep to left with a man on it. It's 2 nothing Expos. They add to that. Top of the ninth, it's 4 to nothing, And the Braves molt. A rally. Otis Nixon drives it towards center field. That drops and takes off. Jeff Blauser comes home to score. Vladdy Smith is right behind him. It's a triple for Nixon. Braves to within 4-2. Next batter, Jeff Treadway drives Nixon home. It's 4-3 Montreal trying to hang on. Tying run on first. Terry Pendleton grounding into the 4-6-3. If you're scoring at home, if you're scoring, you shouldn't be. You should be just enjoying the highlights. Barry Jones almost blew it, but ends up with a save. Expos over Atlanta, 4-3. Braves lose their third straight. Bill Samps like this. Fox hosted the Kansas City Royals, and he got a rousing welcome. Bo's first at bat off Luis Aquino, right back to the mound, and Bo thrown out, but he didn't leg it out. After Bo developed the storyline, here's another one. Roberto Hernandez making his first major league start, telling Todd Benzinger that he's not good. Had a no-hitter going. Bottom of the fourth, big Frank Thomas adds to the storyline with his deep homer off Aquino, his 30th of the season. Dan Pasco hit a two-run homer. Bo says, I can do that if I'm healthy. Seventh inning, Hernandez still had not given up a hit until the leadoff man, Bill Pacota, delivers to right. The only hit that Hernandez would give up in seven full innings. Let's get back to the bow thing, though. Bottom of the eighth. 0 for 3. Steps up there with a runner on. Deep drive. Bo gave him a thrill at Kaminsky. Scoring a sacrifice fly RBI for Robin Ventura. Bo Jackson's first RBI in 1991. As the White Sox win it by the score of 5-1, to one, Bo Baltimore this season. At the Sky Dome, Orioles get up in a hurry. Brady Anderson off Candiotti with a single toward right field. Joe Carter going to try to gun down Mike Devereaux. Here's the throw to the plate. Devereaux slides, and you, you're not out. 4 nothing Orioles. Eighth inning, it was 4-3. Kelly Gruber ties it up with his 15th home run of the year. A line drive shot, so it's 4-all in Toronto. Top of the 11th inning, Sam Horn. Tries to hit one into right field, but look at Roberto Alomar. Turn it, scoop it, and then throw out the big guy. Bottom of the 12th, still tied. The Cleveland connection gets it done. Joe Carter, who was 0 for 15, triples into the corner as Cheeto Martinez tries to come up with it. The next batter, Corey Snyder, hitting 175, delivers. Snyder driving in, Carter and the Jays pull it out in 10-5-4. Candiotti went seven innings, then Acker, Dwayne Ward, and Mike Timlin. Trying to get a 17th win of the year. Rough start. Bottom of the second. Tino Martinez up there, out there, and gone for a home run. His second. That tied the game at one. Mariner fans enjoying everything. I wonder what happened to Ant B. Top of the fourth. Rich Delusia pitching. Rob Deere delivering a double down the line. Here comes Mickey Tettleton. That made it 3-1 to one Detroit. Top of the fifth. Two men on. Cecil Fielder. The home run lead in the major leagues. Gone. His 37th blast of the year. That gave the Tigers a 6-2 lead. It's right now 12-5 in the ninth inning. Gullickson going for 17. Rich Delusia, who had won seven of eight decisions at the Kingdom, is uh, no longer in the picture. So in the East, the Jays will not lose it. Kirby Puckett bridges the gap between the Twins and Tribal and highlights of the team on top of the West. And a look at the Pirates' big sticks at the stick. And Bobby Bo looked like he was going to take a swing at Eric Gregg. We'll explain this when we come back. Stay with us. What? Does 80th win of the season. Erickson looking for win number 17 and facing Carlos Martinez, who drives it deep towards center. It's on the way out. Kirby Puckett goes back and into the bag. He hangs on for the out. Bottom of the seventh. Kirby at the plate facing Eric King. Driving it toward left. Enough to get Jarvis Brown in and give the Twins a one to nothing lead. Bottom of the eighth, it was close. Twins ahead 5-3, but the bases were loaded for Shane Mack. And he touches them all. 
with his 17th home run of the year. The second grand slam of the season. It was a five-run eighth, and the Twins went on to win it 9-3. Seven shutout innings for Erickson, the first 17-game winner in the AL. Twins are now 27 games this afternoon. Pirate bullpen vulnerable. Bottom of the seventh. Stan Belinda gives up the shot to Kevin Mitchell that Bonilla can't come clean on. Clark is in. It's tied at seven. Doug Drabeck saw a lead evaporate. To make things worse, top of the eighth, after flying out, Bobby Bonilla has choice words for Eric Gregg, who said something back. It was over a strike that was called earlier. Greg throws him out of the game. Now, Bonilla really loses it here. Bonds has to come in. His team says, hey, cool it. Don't get yourself suspended. For Jack Howell off Mike Bilek in how about this? His fourth home run of the year. Tony Fernandez on base of the Padres with a 2 to nothing lead. Cubs coming off a rough series in L.A. Top of the six, 2 to 1. Luis Salazar with a three-run shot off Bruce Hurst. His 12th of the year, Dawson and Bell score ahead. The Cubs back up 4-2. Bottom of the sixth, Les Lancaster pitching with the bases loaded and nobody out. Benito Santiago drives it toward left, and that's going to score two. On an 0-2 pitch, he tied the game at four. Right now, it's 5-4 Padres as Kevin Ward has pinch hit, driving in a run with a triple. They're in the seventh inning, San Diego leading the Cubs, who are trying to end Sox. Victory over the Royals. Bo going 0 for 3, but driving in a run. And when we come back, the Angels' Jim Abbott went for his sixth straight win. He's been a blessing for the last place Halos. We'll show you how he did in just a moment. On the suddenly the Red Hot Phillies, Dale Murphy has been hot, and he digs in against Tom Browning here, waits for the off-speed pitch, and parks it. Murphy was 4 for 4, this two-run shot, his 17th home of the year, a 2-0 Philly lead. More problems for Browning in the fourth. Randy Reddy reaches out and touches something. Two-run single to center. And Lou Pinella, who was making noise about getting back in the race a couple of weeks ago, is chewing a lot of gum lately. New pitcher, Kip Gross. First pitch, same results. Dickie Thon says, hello, baby. Hammers a two-run shot to left. The Phillies go up 8-0, put it in cruise control. The Reds have lost four straight. Phillies have been one toward... Pitcher Jim Leland was moved to say that he couldn't be more proud of his guys after this performance. Well, here's a look at Bobby Bonilla. This didn't do anybody proud. He was hot about something Eric Gregg said. Got in his face. Finally, he's pulled away by Barry Bonds and Jim Leland and took that long walk you have to take out at the stick. Top eight, tied at seven. Lean singles to left center. Steve Bouchelle scores easily, and it's eight to seven Pittsburgh. Bottom eight, though. Dave Anderson singles to left off Stan Belinda. And uh, Kevin Bass scores the tying run. It's tied at eight. Then the top of the ninth, Lloyd McClendon pinch hitting. Two outs. The drive to left. Mitchell goes for it but can't handle it. Jay Bell scores. And it's, uh, it's an interesting situation because... because of Frank Viola pitching to Andujar Cedeno at second. Steve Finley grounds it to Howard Johnson. Hojo in that 29-29 club. Home runs and errors. The Astros with a one nothing lead as Finley scores or Andujar scores, Andujar Cedeno. More good defense for Houston as Mackie Sasser is robbed at second by Andy Moda. And then a sliding attempt by Casey Candell to catch it out of the air as the Astros play the good D, the Mets do not. And for baseball tonight, the players of the week are next. Texas is Rafael Palmero, your guest host. Hang in there, we'll be back in a moment. Is that sometimes you miss the action around the league. That is, unless you watch Plays of the Week. Ken Caminiti pops it up, drifting out of play. No, it hit the speaker. He's out. Nope, the umpire saying no play. Line shot. This is going to be for extra bases. In the corner, McReynolds falls down. He better get up. He looks like he's hurt. He is hurt. This might be an inside the park home run. I don't think they could get him. He's coming hard. The throw is not in time. Tie ball game. Is that a sign? Or is he trying to dance? Marty Valentine trying to get something going out there. He's got the bases loaded with Sierra, the hitter. One run in in the inning. It's 2-0. Oh, he maybe wanted Bettis to dance around and draw a ball. And he did. That was a sign from Bobby Valentine. He wanted him to challenge him off third base. Get one of the skipper. When you talk about the best pitchers in the league, Brett Saberhagen is up there. And last Monday night, Brett showed why. Curveball hit right to Terry Shepard. He's going to get it. Brett Saberhagen pitches the first of his career as he shuts out the Sox 7 0. 
I've got mixed emotions as I introduce this week's great plays. You know, a great play against me may cost me the batting title. Hammered up the middle, but again, Roberto Alomar with a oh, jump pass throw. He got him. Ball hammered to right center field and deep. Butler goes back. It is Butler caught it. He caught it. There's a shot right through the legs. A shot to great stop by Dunstan to get him. Dykstra, great running catch to end the inning. And this one may drop in. Oh, what a play by Bernie. Fly ball back to center. Long run for Bernie Williams, who's still on the run and makes the catch oh. and opens the door. Team fitting that his return to the major leagues came against the Kansas City Royals, the team that left him for dead last spring when his hip injury appeared to be a career-ending condition. At Comiskey Park, the return of Bo Jackson batting sixth in the lineup as the designated hitter against his former teammates, and yes, Bo notes rehab. His first at bat, Bo grounds back to Luis Aquino and is thrown out. On his next two, he would ground out and fly out. Roberto Hernandez, meanwhile, making his very first major league start. Memorable, here striking out Todd Benzinger. Hernandez gave up only one hit in seven innings. Bottom of the fourth, a scoreless game, but not for long. Big Frank Thomas hits a solo home run to left off of Aquino, his 30th of the year. Chicago leads by one. Bo's last at bat in the eighth with the bases loaded, a fly ball to center field. Jim Eisenreich makes the catch, but Robin Ventura tags and scores Bo's first RBI in 1991. No one expected me to do what I did tonight, ever, because a lot of you all have written me off, but that's okay too. No one's perfect. The White Sox win at 5-1. Bo went hitless, going 0 for 3. Still, he helped Roberto Hernandez win his Major League debut with his run-scoring sacrifice fly. Ironically, Monday marked the anniversary of Jackson's Major League debut for the Royals in 1986. The victory moved Chicago into a second-place tie with the idle Oakland A's. Still, the White Sox remain eight and a half games behind the division-leading Twins. And Bo was limping less as he was racing to first. When we come back, we'll return to football college action. A rare Monday night appearance, 16th-ranked USC. To Took on Memphis State at the Coliseum. We'll show you that. Plus, there's plenty of baseball left, including the Cubs, who had a little bit of... The Twins, who scored more than the Vikings did, as they tried to open up an eight-and-a-half game lead on the Idle A's in the West. A year ago, Minnesota was in last place in that division, 23-and-a-half games out of first. They hosted Cleveland this afternoon. Different deal. Scott Erickson, part of that, going for win number 17. Carlos Martinez up there. Drives the shot towards center. Feel like a Kirby Puckett go back and hauls it in against the bag. Bottom of the eighth. Twins had a 5-3 lead, but it was tight. Bases loaded. Shane Mack drives it. Deep and gone. He touches them all. Second grand slam this year. That made it 9-3, a five-run inning. Scott Erickson pitching his best since coming off the DL, winning that uh, 17th and moving closer to the Cy Young. The Twins win there and the Mariners. Bill Gullickson also looking for win number 17. A little, you, you're not good to Dave Cochran. Top of the fifth. Cecil Fielder gives his team the big one. Home run number 37. Watch the Emmys. Two for five. He drove in three. Rob Deere went three for four. Cecil Fielder leads the Tigers over the Mariners 12-5. So Tigers stay two and a half behind in the eighth inning. Trailing 4-3 to Baltimore. Kelly Gruber on a liner gets it out for his 15th homer, and it ties the game at four all. Top of the 11th. Orioles batting. Sam Horn drives it toward right field. Look at Robbie Alomar, go to it, get it, and throw him out. Good Toronto defense, keeps it tied in the bottom of the 12th at four. Joe Carter had tripled. Corey Snyder, another ex-Indian, drives him in, and the Jays pull it out. 5-4. Manuel Lee left the game. Can come back with the best of them this season. When trailing after the seventh inning, they've rallied ten times to pull out wins, and that ranks right up there with the Twins, White Sox, and the Cardinals. Neither the San Diego Padres met a first when they faced the visiting Chicago Cubs Monday night. Left field and the Cubs did not agree in this one, at least not early on. Doug DeCenzo uses his head instead of his glove. Not a good idea. Hey, we better wear helmets on that. <laughs> also in left, George Bell. Oops. Give him an E on that one. Later, tab the 8-6-5 Cubs lead. Bases loaded for Ryan Sandberg. 
And no one's going to get a chance to catch this one. It's a grand slam. His 22nd home run of the year gave Rhino 80 RBI this season. The Cubs over the Padres, the final 10-8. Sandberg's grand slam was his first since May 31, 1983 against Houston. Winner Chuck McElroy pitched only one and a third innings before leaving the game with a left bicep strain. Jack Howe homered for San Diego, his fourth in 16 hits since being acquired from California on July 31st. The Reds were in Philadelphia hoping to snap their three-game loser, trying to keep their cool in the NL East pennant race. We'll see if they succeed. Don't go away. Sports Center rolls on in a moment. Stork, you think the Stork brought you? Well, I got news. I just was worse on top of the eighth after flying out. Bonilla has some choice words for the big umpire. Winning a division title, their players may now be forced to play for pride and perhaps statistical considerations. Julio Franco and Rafael Palmeiro are certainly a case in point. Both are in the running for the American League batting crown. This is Julio Franco swinging a hot bat in the sixth against New York's Rich Monteleone. Franco rips this pitch over the head of Roberto Kelly. It's a double for Franco, one of his three hits. Franco is tied for the American League batting lead at 338 with Wade Boggs. Texas, meanwhile, tops New York 7-2. The U.S. Open quarter. Eighth. Dodgers down 3-1. Runners at first and second. Strawberry with a base hit right. Lenny Harris is in that bit at 3-2. Dodgers tie it at three as we go to the top of the ninth. And Ray Langford up there. The Cardinals don't hit many long balls, but Langford got a hold of this one and sends it back as Brett Butler goes up, and it's just out of his reach and just over the wall. Cardinals with a 4-3 lead. Bottom of the ninth, two out. Lee Smith on. Jose Offerman at third. Lenny Harris at the plate and ties the game, sending it back through the middle. So with a pair of fours, we go to the 11th. Rich Gedman facing Jay Howe, and that's deep enough. For a two-bagger to score Geronimo Pena, the Cardinals went on to score a few more and won it. 7-4. to four. The Cardinals are 10-3 and three in extra inning games this season. Frazier defeats Howell, but even though the Dodgers lose because the break. Coming up on Baseball Tonight. Bo is back in the big leagues. His designated return comes against the team that gave him his royal release. Bobby Bo was given the heave ho and a wild one at the stick. O to be 18 again. Tom Glavitt was trying to get there for the first time. Bill Gullinson was out to match his career high and wins as well. Kirby Puckett tried to help the Twins bridge the gap against the Tribe, and the Blue Jays were on the defensive with the Orioles in town. Speaking of defense, we'll have the gift of grab on Plays of the Week. Baseball tonight, it's part of your night. Next. That I see missing from Bo Jackson. He used to run like a young stallion with those legs pumping real high up above his belly button. And it's just one of those things that it's going to take time, but uh, he is coming along great. But the home run lead in the major leagues, gone. His 37th blast of the year, that gave the, the gap between the Twins and Tribal and highlights of the team on top of the West. And a look at the... Driving it toward left, enough to get Jarvis Brown in and give the Twins a one to nothing lead. Bottom of the eighth, it was close. Twins ahead 5-3, but the bases were loaded for Shane Mack, and he touches them all with his 17th home run of the year, the second grand slam of the season. It was a five-run eighth on the Twins. Dale Murphy scored Jack Howell off Mike Bilek, and how about this? His fourth home run of the year. Tony Fernandez on base of so the Padres with a 2 to nothing lead. Cubs coming off a rough series in L.A. Top of the six, 2-1. to one. Luis Salazar with a three-run shot off Bruce Hurst. His 12th of the year. Dawson and Bell score ahead. The Cubs back up 4-2. Bottom of the sixth, Les Lancaster pitching with the bases loaded and nobody out. Benito Santiago drives it toward left. And that's going to score two. On an 0-2 pitch, he tied the game at four. Right now... It's 5-4 Padres as Kevin, when we come back, the Angels' Jim Abbott went for and won 15 games each as a contender for a division title, but not so if you're the 1991 version of the Anaheim Angels. Last place, California threw a hot Jim Abbott against Milwaukee. He went for his sixth straight win and got plenty of offensive support from Junior Felix, who doubled to drive home Luis Polonia and give the Angels the lead. Then on the top of the fourth, tied at three. Felix up again. 
and delivers, driving home Donahill with the lead run for three Angels. They went on to win it as Junior Felix drove in a career ascending to get his 15th win of the season. Now, Abbott, Chuck Finley, and Mark Langston have combined for 46 wins for California. All lefties and all with the awesome victory totals. Only twice before in history have teams had three left-handed 15-game winners in both times they won divisions. The 74 Orioles with Grimsley, Cuellar, Dave McNally, and the 80 Yanks with Louisiana Lightning, Tommy John, and Rudy May. Speaking of the Yanks, they took on Texas. An ugly night in Texas, a little rainy. Kevin Reimer going to make the catch and splash dive on Roberto Kelly's liner. Then things really got ugly for the Yanks. Rich Monteleone, I had a comebacker, is going to throw it home. And it gets away. Kevin Reimer is in to score for Texas. Matt Noakes throwing through a delayed steal, and it goes into center field. Here comes Juan Gonzalez. Hensley Mullins on the ground at a first, and he throws it past. They could send this to Bob Saget. Rangers over stump, and the Yankees 7-2. Oil can his first win as a Ranger. Julio Franco had three hit. Frank Viola pitching to Andujar Cedeno at second. Steve Finley grounds it to Howard Johnson. Hojo in that 29-29 club. Home runs and errors. The Astros with a 1-0 lead as Finley scores, or Andujar scores, Andujar Cedeno. More good defense for Houston as Mackie Sasser is robbed at second by Andy Moda. And then a sliding attempt by Casey Candell to catch it out of the air as the Astros play the good D, the Mets do not. And rookies night out for the 